contrary. Motion carried. Um, and so we, uh, Councilor Marie just added um, Barbara Webster and Craig LeBlanc. I'm good with that, okay. It's Minutia, no, it's but it's going to be, it's, I'm going to ask you something too. Okay. Oh, I was going to ask you if you wanted to go. Oh. Okay. Okay, so staff reports. We're good to go. Staff reports, CAO report. We have a budget presentation. CAO, sorry. Uh, Your Worship, uh, I did uh, prepare my report late this morning. I, it's not on your desk. I'll circulate that for you. Uh, there wasn't a lot got done this last little while except for uh, dealing with Lake George, some HR matters, and obviously, uh, uh, <laughs> um, no, that's fine. We'll circulate it afterwards. So I do have a presentation on uh, sort of pre-budget presentation that I do every year. I'll leave it to your discretion if you want to hear from other staff before I do that or if you want me to proceed now. It's up to you. Go ahead. Can we... Uh can we hear that at the end and uh, we'll get, if, if everybody's in agreement, we can deal with the staff matters and this and that, I think, probably first, and we'll get it towards the end, if that's okay. I would does, recommend does we do that. Does anybody disagree with that, that we put the budget at the end? We've got people yeah. here that want to yeah. speak to. Yeah. Okay. Good. Thank you. So your report, will handle that after two. Fire department report. Okay. Anything for the chief? Go ahead, Councillor. How much damage on uh, Porter Street the other night, John? Damage on the what? On Porter Street. Porter Street. Not a lot of damage. The team got there really fast. Uh, kept it to the uh, origin, the room of origin. So uh, basically a bed was burned and uh, it's fixable. A couple of the windows they had to take out for a ventilation, but that was it. Yep. And the... Um how's the training with the new recruits? Everything going, still going well? Everything's going well. Um, We've, uh, we're at the point now where they're, uh, they got all their bunker gear and everything, and they're actually doing uh, physical training out back and uh, things like that, uh, going very well. And of course, the numbers keep going up and down. It's flexible. Right. Good. 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 Anything else for the chief? Councillor Dennis? Just one question on sewer and water. Um, in 2014, it was 69, 215, 19, and now it's down to 10. What do you attribute that to? On, say again? On the... On the uh, Sewer and water, town of Yarmouth. Sewer and water, town of Yarmouth. Yeah. Oh, you, you mean for the calls? For the, yes. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what's going on with that. We just take the, the calls into the station and then give them to the appropriate people. Okay. All so right. I don't know what would be. Great, thanks. Yes, uh, the dispatch calls is what, what's on the uh, report they have. And there's a section in there that takes the, the uh, complaint calls in and also the uh, calls to do with... Uh, uh, water, sewage, right. any so, so the dispatchers man a 24-7 line for the town generally. So if we have, uh, you know, basement flooding, sewer backup, those kinds of issues, that's what that is. And so the decrease might be related to some of the improvements on Argyle Street, as an example. Good. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Planning report. Questions for Caroline? How's the bus going in our second month? Uh, last I checked, really, really good. Chad might have some updates for you moving forward. Good. Yeah. Excellent. Good. Councillor Langell? No, Councillor McIsaac first, and then Councillor Th Langell. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, just a, a comment on the, on the report itself. It's well done. It's an easy read. It gives everything other than you brushing your teeth in the morning. It's great. <laughs> I mean, you go from so you first get here to the time that you leave and everything that you do. It's, it's, it's a good report, and uh, I read it with a lot of enthusiasm and a, a lot of work you're doing, hard work you're doing on this, you and your, your team. Thanks. Keep up the good work. Councillor Landro? Just uh, two comments, Your Worship. Um, first of all, I'm kind of curious. I love new words. How do you pronounce that? Q-I-G-O-N-G. -G. Oh, my Lord.
Lord. It was Q-Jing or something. It was Q-Jean? fun. We all Q-Jean? did it, yeah. I think that's absolutely incredible. I really commend you for that. I noticed it the other day when I was leaving the, leaving the building late that people were in here, and I thought, what is going on in there? So I want to really commend, absolutely commend you guys for doing that. That's, health and wellness is all the big thing. And on the bus, I do want to comment your worship on my walks. Uh, when we started this bus process, we had a lot of naysayers, as you know. And um, one naysayer in particular, no names mentioned, who absolutely was cursed that bus and thought it was the biggest waste of money, uh, stopped me yesterday, uh, yesterday, the day before yesterday, on the street and said, listen, I want to let you know, he said, I took that bus to the hospital to visit my mother. I love that bus. That is the best thing you could have ever done in the town of Yarmouth, and I'm going to be riding it from now on. So I'm quite impressed. So we did a good job. So congratulations to you. And I do hope. Now, our planner CAO, now, is she, she's permanent now. She's not any probationary or warnings or parole or anything like that, is she? <laughs> <laughs> I just want to make sure. I don't want to see anything. I don't want to see anything happen to her. So I just want to make sure that she's, she's safe. Okay, that's all I'm caring about. Thanks. <laughs> you know, look, yeah. That was meant to make you feel better, but I don't see it did the job. Counselor uh, Dennis. I just wanted to say, Caroline, it's great to see the commercial renovations that were up in January from 38,000 to 283,900. That's wonderful. Yeah, and we had a really good year last year. All our numbers were up. So to start the year off up again, it's great. Yeah. It's what we like. Anything else for the planner? Thank you, Caroline. Operations. There was no report, a chance here today. Go ahead. Yeah, so, so there was not a report, but uh, as the mayor started to say, uh, Chad is here. Uh, if there are any questions, uh, he may be able to assist. Go ahead, Councillor Langell. I have to say this, and I really want it in the minutes, because I've been saying this for about four years, and I know this is a minor, picky thing, but it bugs me to no end. It's up on your street, Your Worship. Oh, the, the crosswalk. crosswalk. I want it. I love if don't if I don't accomplish anything in this term as council to get that crosswalk moved to the side of the street where the sidewalk is so it doesn't go into a lawn, yeah. so, so it's a very minor thing. But I, I I vowed a couple of people on that street that I would work to get that crosswalk put in the right spot. So I, so I just wanted to bring it up, Your Worship, that uh, it's a it's a deep concern for a couple of your loyal supporters on the street. And there is no hope that I am going to be asking for anything on my street. So you can follow his lead. Number one, you, you did. Uh, um, and I just want to say this, although this, uh, we shouldn't be throwing these types of things after you, but um, in Yarmouth South, a lot of lights are out, street lights. Quite, quite a number of street lights. Executive for the street? Which ones? The, uh, the, uh, I keep Okay, good. So, Councillor Mooney, you're on. <clears throat> Maybe to the CAO or to yourself, your worship, or to uh, Chad, just uh, the question you get every day, or you see it sometimes on Facebook. Um, <laughs> the lights on Brunswick Street and the Jody Shelley. Just give us a little overview. I know that we got a, 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 a little note. Note this week as councillors, but I don't know if that made the public, so maybe. Can, would you mind, Chad, coming up and explaining that? Because it's, uh, I, um, yeah, I went on Facebook too. I kind of suggested if it's such an issue to wait a minute, maybe drive around. Yeah. Because yeah, it, it's not I, a. I can't really comment on the traffic lights at Brunswick and Stars at this point, um, but I can comment on the lights at Stars and Jody Shelley. Um, a part was ordered last week, the part arrived two hours ago, uh, and it's scheduled, the repairs are scheduled for tomorrow morning. Okay. Yep. So, so I have, yes. 
Woo! Okay, so I have to ask this because you know you get the yeah, it took you took you two years, but they've been off and on. That's not which ones? The, the, those at Jody Shelley, like they've been off yeah. and on and yeah. Well, part of the problem is we have eight or nine sets of traffic lights in town, and mm -hmm. they're not standardized. We have some old technology mixed in with new, so it's hard for us to stock any any inventory of parts, and um, so that's been a challenge. Um, but uh, the more problems we face, the more uh, experience our electrician gets, so mm -hmm. I think we're slowly, you know, the process is slowly yeah. becoming a little yeah. a little quicker so okay. bear with us it's not I'm, I, and i'm going to say this is only from me personally it's not an issue for me yeah it, brunswick street certainly isn't an issue it's yeah. a four-way stop it moves better hoping to maintain that yeah whatever whatever uh, the traffic experts say and uh jody shelley is is waiting a minute but cause, yeah so, it's, it's, so i know you're doing everything yeah, you can i mean personally i try to yeah. avoid those yeah. uh, intersections when I know yeah. the lights aren't functioning well, but it's yeah. it's difficult because there's a lot of traffic that needs to get to Stairs Road. Mm -hmm. Good. Anyway, it'll be fixed tomorrow morning. Perfect. Good, thank you. Perfect. Councillor Dennis. Chad, I don't want to put you on the spot. Um, it's just a question that I have. I had made a motion before the staff was directed to look at the sidewalk off ramps on the corner of Jenkins and Main Street to see if something can be done to lower the incline for people crossing the street using walkers and wheelchairs. So you had got back to Dave and said the pedestrian ramp on the south side has a 14 degree slope and on the north side a 17 degree slope. So the standard required is um, 8.33, so that's almost double on one side. Yeah. And uh, it says that the ramps will have to be modified, so my question is, um, when will we be getting this done? Because people have, when we had the snow again this time, people were falling again. We're lucky we haven't had snow lately, but. Yeah, it's on the list um, for repairs as soon as we um, tender this spring. Um, the only complication is to achieve the, um, the grade that's required. We have to go back a little bit further um, into the existing sidewalk and maybe into the um, excuse me, I, I can't remember what bank that it's adjacent to those ramps, but yes. we, we do have to um, go back a little further into what's potentially private property, so I just need to contact the, the owners of the bank just to get their permission. I don't see that being an issue, but um, it, it'll be addressed this year. Okay, sure. thanks very much. Yep. Good. Anything else for planning for Chad? Good to go. Thank you. Welcome. I know you're busy. Thanks. Thanks. Good job. Finance department. Danny wants to know if we have any money. Not a lot. <laughs> <laughs> it's March. Okay. Jerry, do you have anything for us that No, we've been working on the budget. Do the budget piece. A presentation, so that's what we've been doing. Good. Thank you. Okay. Recreation. Frank Oh, okay. And economic development, we've got that report. Natalie, welcome. I brought my water in case I start to cough. <laughs> uh, I've provided you with my monthly status report if there are any questions on that. Go ahead. Just, just I got a feeling I'm going to be asked this question, so I just want to make sure I have the answer. This passport. Yes. Uh, the, did all merchants have an opportunity to go in it? No. no. Okay, so how were the merchants in it? Were they selected? What we did is we identified some merchants that would be from uh, either ends of the community and then some in the middle. We approached those. Uh, if anyone said no, then we went on to another list until we got the 16. So we knew it would be a short list because there were only 16 spots. So if we do this again, these ones will not be part of that? Right. So this is like a trial balloon. Okay. This is just like a trial balloon with no cost incurred um, other than the, the um, monies that we collected from the people that subscribe to the service. So our intention is to take a look at this, see the success of it, 
and then see how that could be morphed into a much larger program because we've already had uh, some uh, retailers saying, oh, how can we get on it? How can we be added to it? How can we be a part of the next one? So, so far it's positive that we're getting some of those reactions. Yeah, I, I yeah. It, it's great, great idea, yeah. Too, yeah. I got quite a number of businesses that said, we want in the next time. Exactly. So awesome. Good. Long as we can cycle. Yeah. And the school teacher in me coming out, jewelry is misspelled. I'm sorry? Jewelry is misspelled. <gasps> yeah, oh, that's Rick. And dinner, yeah. Mern's diner, yeah. should yeah. be dinner. Just yeah. put it on Facebook, it'll yeah. fit right in. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's bad. That's a good one. I should do it for That's the new right. website. Yes, spot the mistakes. Good. Yeah. Anything else for Natalie? So the new website, just to a comment, the new website is uh, getting switched over late Sunday night. Uh, we had a little delay. Our, our original target was this Monday, but uh, our host uh, AMA, they had 24 sites to move to a new server, and we just didn't want to have any potential risks happening for council as they were to log in to, to view files. So it's happening this Sunday night. I think you will be excited when you see um, what, the, what the site is and what it does. We've been getting some pretty positive feedback from uh, the developers saying that, um, you know, it's almost a best-in-class website. Yeah, yeah. We've taken, I know I've taken a peek and it's lovely. Councillor Dennis? Yeah, that's what I want to say. I, I've been on it and it's really good because the one that we had was so hard to find things that you were looking for, so this is great. Yeah, the neat thing about the, the website is with this particular template in technology today is we're gonna be able to make it um, feature rich. So for example, this week I created a YouTube town of Yarmouth, Nova Scotia um, channel. And so we're able to take some of our videos, load it on there and then link it to content on the website. So now we can communicate via words, we can communicate via pictures, by podcast, by a newsletter, by a video. So if council, you know, wants to get the message out in many different forms, we now have the capability to kind of wrap it all together in one succinct manner that I think will reach any audience that we want to get to. Excellent. Anything else for Natalie? Good? Great, Thanks thank you. Very much. Okay, request for decision, taxi bylaw, CAO. Go ahead. Okay, <clears throat> you've prob I hope you've had a chance to, uh, to read this. What I'm generally looking for here is direction. Uh, you know, our taxi bylaw we've talked about for the last year or so does need some work in terms of the, uh, the content. We made some changes around the governance because the former taxi association no, no longer uh, exists. Uh, we've put out for applications uh, for people to be on the taxi advisory committee without success. In the meantime, uh, we know and we've had complaints about illegal taxis. Uh, some citizens are utilizing the illegal taxis and are unwilling to complain. Uh, or provide evidence against the operators. Uh, we also know that the existing licensed operators complain about the $175 annual cost for maintaining a license. So I guess the observation is the public clearly does not put a high value on the licensing requirement as they're not selecting to any great extent, the legal taxis versus the illegal taxis. If they were, then the drivers of the legal taxis would perceive their license to have value greater than the $175. We are not required to uh, regulate taxis. In fact, the municipality of Yarmouth does not. And so therein comes another issue is that taxis that in fact operate outside of town can bring their fares into town uh, unlicensed. The other thing that's happening, and I know you're aware of it, is, is the, uh, the Uber app that is disrupting uh, regulated taxi industries in larger centers. And I, I read that there's a study actually going on in Nova Scotia about the potential impacts of, of Uber. So uh, the question, I guess, where, where I'm looking for direction 
is uh, do you want us to uh, consider again changing the governance structure so that we could actually have an advisory committee that could then uh, dig deeper into the bylaw or would you prefer that we rescind the bylaw get out of the business of regulating taxis it's it's a it's an area that we we regulate uh, through inspection and whatnot but we we have really poor luck in terms of enforcement because the people who utilize those services are, are unwilling to give us any evidence. Uh, so I guess I'm looking for direction. What would you like us to do? Okay. Uh, Deputy? Um, Your Worship, uh, <clears throat> Jeff, I, in reading this, uh, your information, <clears throat> Why don't we consider what uh, getting out of the business of regulating taxis? What are the implications of getting out of the business period of regulating? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, if it's not regulated by us, it won't be regulated by anybody except the public. And so, uh, you know, the public will choose to to use the the operators that they feel most comfortable with, whose vehicles are up to their standards. The one risk, uh, the one issue, is that visitors won't have the local market knowledge, and so when they look up the name of a taxi company in the phone book, and it's unregulated, you know, they they uh, they have no assurance, right, that there's any standard that that taxi driver is, has met or that they've been vetted through a, uh, a criminal record check or anything of that nature. Did you want to Again, just to respond, uh, I, I understand that, Jeff, and you've mentioned that before a little while ago now. I don't see that as a particular challenge. Uh, if I'm operating a taxi business and I want to appeal, I, I think that I would try to do my best. Um, I would say, from my point of view, that we should get out of the business of regulating taxis, if it's, if it's a possible. I agree. You were next, actually. Okay, th thank you, Your Worship. Uh, I, uh, I, I kind of, I, I agree with, with the Deputy Mayor on this one, and uh, <clears throat> I think people are pretty smart. People are pretty smart. They know the uh, taxis that are in the town of Yarmouth. Uh, I've known them for a number of years, usually the, the same ones, and usually the same people that are driving without any taxi license are still the same people. Uh, there's not really any big changes here. I'm, I'm reading here there's a taxi bylaw under the Motor Vehicle Act. Is that correct? Is that's a story that we have. So whether we keep this or not, do they, do they, if they own a taxi business, do they have to register with the province or anything like that? Uh, but we're saying that you have to register with us so we can do inspections and what have you, what have you. But insurance companies, I think, would probably take that take that in consideration. If you're going to run a taxi business, you've got to have liability. I know I have to have liability. Anybody that's in business has to have liability. So I think that part is covered. I think to, uh, you know, in, in all fairness to the people that are trying to make a dollar in the taxi business, it's hard enough without paying a, a yearly or a monthly fee, whatever it is. And uh, I don't really think they need Big Brother watching over. I think it kind of polices itself. And uh, if, if there's going to be a vote on this, I would probably go on the side of what the deputy mayor says. I, I think we should relax it for a year or so, maybe come, come back and look at it again and down, down the road or another year or two. Just give it a time to uh, work, out, work out whether it's going to work or not. We can, always, we can always bring it back, or the next council can always bring it back, I think, so if things ain't working right. But look, let's give it a chance and see how it works. Councillor Mooney? Uh, Jeff, do you know if uh, any other municipal units maybe our size like Kentville, Bridgewater, Truro, Amherst, do you know if they have a, is, has, have you contacted any other municipal unit to see have what they have in place and um, what the minimum standards are because uh, you know and, and I think we, the mayor took a little hammer in here last year or the year before is if we pick up somebody at the at the terminal and you know Russell does the taxi inspections and you know there's minimum standards and 
you get down there and I'm not talking about what they're wearing but I'm talking about the condition of the car and I know that's going to be regulated by insurance and the motor vehicle inspection agencies but um, dirty car rotting floorboards whatever 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 you know it doesn't look good for the first uh, viewing they're getting of the town of Yarmouth is they're getting in a, a car with a taxi sign on it with uh, substandard equipment that's the only thing I have but I'm, I, I feel exactly the same as um, Councillor McIsaac that they can regulate themselves it's like a restaurant it's like any other store or business um, if they're clean they keep up the standards and they're going to get the business right so that's right they, they the customers inspect the taxis or the business or whatever on a regular basis Yeah, yeah, I would just say it's it's a little bit all over the map. Uh, some regulate, some don't. Uh, I haven't done a comprehensive review, but I've, I've looked at a few. Some are a lot shorter than ours, which means they're a lot less specific in terms of the standards imposed on the drivers and on the vehicles and on what they wear and everything else. Councillor Dennis. I'll make a motion that we recommend to council to proceed to the first reading to rescind the taxi bylaw. Um, okay, somebody's probably going to second it, but I just I I'm going to say something. Okay, okay it's seconded. I I disagree for right now. I think that we bring the taxi drivers in, sit down and see. Maybe just ask them where do they want to go. It's their business. And, and where do they think? I, I, I think that they are going to say they would like a little bit of direction or a little bit of, of what we're providing. The problem is the illegal cabs out there, number mm -hmm. one. Number two, and, and you said this, when you land down there, when you land at the, uh, when you land at, at getting off the ferry and you, you see some of what is picking up our visitors, we want to make sure that the first impression of Yarmouth and the province is a good one. Um, maybe it's not up to us to, to do that. I think it is. So, so my, I'm, I'm just going to vote against the motion only because I think we need to bring them in and also bring in, because I've spoken to a couple of them, the lady that you and I talked to from the Halifax, and. Uh, and, and she's got the whole picture on the ins and outs of, of all these pieces and maybe they come together and they do this themselves but I hate to see it thrown out and then, then it's willy nilly and, and then the people that even are doing it legally and trying to do it right they're still overrun by, by the ones that are just charging five dollars to get in the cab and that's just my thought though. Councillor Lando. Well, <coughs> okay go ahead. Well even though we do this, there's still <coughs> public notice is going to be given, so the public can still come in and <coughs> say that they want to keep it, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I just think we don't let it go yet, but the, okay. it'll go through because I know he's. All right. There's a strong feel that we let it go, and that's okay. okay. Oops, sorry. Uh, Councillor Landro. Thank you, Your Worship. I agree 100% with you. I, um, I'm a little bit reluctant to see us cancel the bylaw altogether. At least we have something in place. At least we have a regulation in place. At least we have a bylaw in place. I agree that your process you suggested is dead on. I mean, the idea of bringing the, the stakeholders together, where are we going to go from here? This is our problem. I cannot believe that the people who are in the taxi industry right now in Yarmouth would not want some form of regulation and some sort of protection for, for their businesses. Um, by throwing this out the window right now, we're opening this town to anybody. Can I can put a light on the top of my car and start picking up passengers. Um, we had some pretty disgusting taxis a few years ago in this town and don't say that <laughs> I know I remember your <laughs> I remember your cartoon <laughs> but we did I mean in fairness I've been in a few of them and I mean I will give the industry credit they have cleaned up the act the taxis we have are off standard but we have no idea what these unofficial taxis are like so I'm I'm not supporting the motion I, I really feel that we should we should get the stakeholders in we should craft a bylaw that works I think we should be proactive and create a bylaw that 
the taxi industry can live with and that it give with a little bit of teeth and that we can have a, a service in this town that we all can be proud of. So I'm not supporting the motion. Councillor Mooney. And I think Councillor, everybody's made good points and I think the prime thing that we should do right now is consult the stakeholders, see where they want to go from here. And they, if they say, um, the illegal cabs have, have done this to us. Um, we're overregulated municipally and provincially. Um, we have a hard time because even the taxi drivers, you know, your worship had a hard time. Um, one came in and said, we like the rate, and the other one said, we want to go up. Yeah. You know, um, we, we had a problem with that. So at least maybe we get the stakeholders in, have a talk to them uh, in the next little bit, and then if, if they say, uh, we can go it alone. We don't need your help. We can regulate ourselves. You know, um, we can use the motor vehicle inspection agencies to inspect their cars, do the other thing. Then we'll go that. But I would like the the lady that we talked to from from tours and maybe to yes. come down and sit in on that meeting, um, just to give an overview on uh, what it means to the province and what it means for the first sight impressions, all the other things. But I think. Um, um, we all ran, I think, last election to cut red tape, do the other thing. This is a great opportunity to do it, but I think we should cult, consult with the stakeholders first before we, we do this step. And I don't disagree that maybe we don't need a taxi bylaw, but at least we should talk to the stakeholders first. Yeah. I agree. Deputy? Just one more comment. The motion that we make today uh, has to be approved at uh, a regular council meeting. So my, my uh, thought was that if we pass the motion today, if, if we could approve or not approve at a regular council meeting, and by then we probably would encourage more of the stakeholders to um, call the town office to see if there is what, what opportunity, what's going to happen. That's next we, week. We Just, might. That's in one week. I'm going to, I was going to, I realized that. I was going to suggest that we make it for the month of uh, April, but maybe we can't do that uh, legally or tech, technically, but uh, that would give people, stakeholders, time to, to uh, say, oh, gee, what's going on here? We should find out. So rather than us be, provide all the initiative, it might be better, nicer, if the people in the community and the taxi industry provide the initiative. Yeah. So I'm going to vote in favor of the motion at this point, Your Worship. Okay, anything else, anyone? Okay, question's been called, all those in favor? Contrary? Yeah. Nay. Oh, <laughs> Too late now. Too late. No, we counted you as four. We Yeah, we counted you as three. It was three, 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 so it was defeated. Okay. But that doesn't mean we're not coming back to it. Right? We're just going to. Yeah. No? Were they here for this? They're now. Oh, okay. Because they're here for the smoking one. Yeah, okay. So they're up after, right after this one. Kilman Rudders Wharf Marina Rates Proposal. Head CAO. Uh, thank you, thank you, Worship. <clears throat> well, you're welcome. We have uh, Sorry. we have no off-season uh, rates uh, for Killam's Wharf, and that is a bit of a problem. Uh, as you may notice, if you go down Water Street, we have some we have some vessels tied up, and it, we're technically we're in our off-season. And uh, we would prefer not to have them tied up in the off months because of the damage that, that we incur. So uh, the way we want to deal with this after having consulted with legal is to uh, set rates for the off season. And that's what's included in this proposal. What that will allow us to do is uh, have costs, basically have fees applied to those that tie their boats up at this, this time of year. Those uh, fees will accumulate as long as they're tied up, and uh, there'll be a liability, I guess. Right now, there is no liability against the owners of the boat for tying up at those docks. So uh, this will help us in the enforcement side of, uh, of trying 
basically trying to protect your docks in the off season. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, I'm going to move that we accept the recommendation that was brought forward by staff or uh, the CEO. This is very problematic uh, in, in the off season, off season months, and uh, there's been a lot of damage done to the uh, to the floats down there, with the uh, vessels that that are there over the winter months, and they don't pay anything. And uh, they're, they're causing havoc, and there's been a lot of complaints about it, even from commercial boat owners themselves. They they get there and they don't have to pay anything. But uh, if they were at our wharfs, they would have to pay a berthing fee there. They're not paying anything. So I think this this is a good this is a good thing. I'm glad the uh, CEO brought this up and brought it forward, and I recommend that uh, we accept this as presented today. Seconded. Any more discussion? Questions. Questions being called. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Contrary? Motion carried. Smoke free places bylaw. Yep, sorry. Your Worship, I meant to have that removed from the agenda. Uh, it isn't ready. Uh, it was sent over to Greg for his final review before bringing it forward. So, uh, are they aware? I had told Raymond that before the meeting started. Oh, okay. Okay, good. Gone. Stars Road and Brunswick Street intersection. <laughs> That's a good one, though. Go ahead, CAO. Okay, so uh, Council passed a motion uh, to look at the feasibility of a four way stop at the corner of Stars Road and Brunswick Street and provide pricing uh, for traffic lights at the intersection and report back for, to the Committee of the Whole. So uh, you've got the, uh, the memo from Dave Ertz. So he engaged a traffic engineer to, to review uh, the situation. Uh, the recommendations for the report are that a four-way stop is detrimental to the overall traffic movement on Stars Road corridor and should not be continued as, long as, as a long-term traffic control strategy. Traffic volumes are disproportionate between Stars Road and Brunswick Street. And secondly, the traffic signals presently inoper inoperative should be returned to full operation. The operation of traffic signs is necessary to maintain an adequate level of service at the intersection. And the cost uh, for the controller, uh, detector system, and so on installation <coughs> is included for your information. Worship, I read this and uh, was kind of surprised by it because uh, I go through that intersection several times a day and I've never had it so smooth as it's been since we had the four-way stops. And I am looking at this saying, wow, I've never, I've never had to wait more than one car length to go either way, at most maybe two, whereas before I was lining up three or four. Um, I don't know. I like to see it stay the way it is for a while just to make sure I know these are professionals and they've done their fancy work and there's all kinds of staggering figures which my colleague to my right comment you have to be a Philadelphia lawyer to understand all this stuff uh, because it is I mean uh, I thought it was an educated fellow but whoa I'm looking at all these numbers and I'm thinking of Councillor McIsaac that the figures don't lie but sliders that figure kind of come into my mind here you know <laughs> so I'm really I'm looking at this and I say <laughs> so, I mean, I'm looking at this, and I, I don't understand it. I mean, I, it, I've had nothing. The, one of the few comments I've had from people consistently in round town is what a wonderful job we've done by putting the four-way stop on the corner of Brunswick and Stars. And every, I have yet to hear anyone come to me and say, and I talk to a lot of people every day on my walks, and I've yet to have somebody say, oh, please, God, put those, put those lights back. Nobody has asked for them. They've all said the contrary. Can we please? <laughs> hey, now, now, now. Uh, and the comment from Motor Mart, um, you know, uh, Gary Ellis made a comment, and so did Jeff Little. One time, one day I was in there getting done. They said, wow, it's the best thing you guys ever did. So I don't know. I'd, I kind of like to hold off on this a little bit, Your Worship. Let's just see what goes. Do we really have to act on this right away? Because I kind of like it the way it is. And I... I'd like to see what happens with, with, with this because I, I think we got a winner here rather than spend, I don't know, 50 odd thousand dollars to put in a light system that maybe we don't need. Those little stop signs kind of work a little bit better. I don't know what my other colleagues feel, but that's my two cents. Go ahead. Thank you, Your Worship. Well, 
I don't disagree and I don't I, I agree. So take that for what it's worth. But we asked to have <clears throat> we asked to have this looked at from experts. And these people are experts in the traffic authority. Uh, they gave their report, they gave their findings. Whether you like them or don't like them, they are the traffic authority findings. They're suggesting for safety reasons and efficiency reasons, more safety, I would say, than efficiency reasons, and the flow of traffic and everything, that's part of safety, that they be installed. So, uh, you know, it's far from me to be an expert whether four stop signs or four traffic lights. I know to put four stop signs, it's a hell of a lot cheaper. But when you ask for a recommendation from experts, you get the recommendation and then you go against it, it's kind of contrary to why you should have asked it in the first place when you already knew the answer. Like the lawyer says, if you, you should always know the answer before you ask the question. Well, this is like putting the cart before the horse. So I, I would go with the recommendation that was brought before us myself personally. And that way you have, if there's ever any accidents or whatever there, there's not much, a, not much of a liability uh, when somebody probably could maybe use this document against the town of Yarmouth saying, well, you had a pile up there and uh, you didn't go through the recommendations that was brought to you that you asked for. You went with the four stop signs instead of going with what you should have went with that was recommended. So I think before we say yes or no on this, I think we should get perhaps, this is one that might need a legal opinion on this before we say yes or no on this. Uh, my question would be to the CAO, what his thoughts are on that. Okay, hang on a second. That question. Um, <clears throat> what are the implications of not um, installing the lights or, and or the recommendations of the company as Danny has suggested, I wonder? Good, Councillor Mooney. Just wondering, have we had any um, Accidents at that location since the lights have stopped working? Yeah, I better not say what I was going to say. I'm getting in trouble again. <coughs> okay, that so. So uh, I don't know about the accident history. I can find that out. Uh, probably I think we have accidents at every intersection. Or I can just leave that alone. Mm -hmm. Or I can just leave it alone, whichever. Yeah. No, go ahead. I'm just saying an accident doesn't No, qualify. but if you want to know the accident history, I can get the accident history. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Prior to and uh, Prior to since, since, yeah, sure. So for comparison. Um, one of the one of the challenges uh, with this is that is that you know we're, we're the report is based on one set of counts uh, that was done. There is a possibility that you could redo uh, traffic counts at another at another time, and that would either confirm or or contradict the uh, the uh, recommendations of the traffic engineer. Uh, as far as the safety goes, I don't think it's really a matter of safety. I think a four-way stop is a safe intersection. It's more about the level of service. It's about the, 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 I guess, the efficient flow of traffic. And based on the traffic counts, uh, there are times and, and directions where, where it doesn't meet the, the engineered standards based on, based on that one set of counts. So uh, I don't think you're exposing any liability towards the town. Uh, I would suggest, however, that the stop signs that are there, if they're going to, to remain there, I think we might ask that that be reviewed in terms of, you know, is there a, a uh, is the installation, you know, uh, as good as we can do? One of the problems that I see, and, and I go through there fairly regular myself, is you have all the traffic light infrastructure there, right? And then you have those stop signs. So I'm not sure to somebody unfamiliar to to the intersection when you're approaching, you're you're seeing lights, but you're not seeing lights. You know, what if that might be confusing at all? I don't know. If you are going to remove or, or go to, on a permanent basis, just a stop sign, then I would suspect we would then remove all of that infrastructure, the, the overhead lights and so on, so that uh, it's clear what the nature of the intersection is. So I guess, uh, you know, there is, there's no reason you need to move quickly on this, from my perspective. Uh, yeah, I would suggest, though, that at the least, uh, maybe to do another set of counts and have the, the situation confirmed 
and uh, that would buy you some time or experience with it. Um, yeah. for, I, and we'll get the accident history as well. So. Okay, so, so the CAO will get the accident history. We'll do another set if we have a motion to do that, another set of counts. This was December, I think, if I read it right. That's a crazy time of year, but okay. Uh, Councillor Langell. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, yeah, I, if we are going to do a second count, and I'd make that a motion that we direct staff to do a, a, a second uh, a count of the traffic flow on the corner of uh, Brunswick and Stairs Road. Um, I think it would be nice, though, to have that flow on a Friday and a Saturday because that's when we are at peak traffic on uh, Stars Row. I think these figures, I, I'm just trying to figure out which days they were, but I think it was a Tuesday they were doing, uh, and Monday and a Tuesday. But the town of Yarmouth swells on a Friday and a Saturday uh, with traffic from the outside. And uh, I'm wondering, we should really look at that because that, that's indicative of any amount of traffic happening on that street. I know that's when it's relatively hectic on Stars Road, unless there's a, a reason for the days we selected, but of course, if it's comparative analysis, we probably would have to do Monday and Tuesday again, I'm thinking, whatever the CAO would suggest. CAO? Yeah, we would uh, obviously, I think the, the folks we use for this are familiar with, with town. They don't live here, but they're familiar. They do a fair amount of work for us. What I'd suggest is that we, we tell them what we think we know about volumes and what happens in town and let them guide us in terms of when the counts will be done. But. Okay, so there's a motion on the floor to ask for the extra counts. Can I have a seconder? Second. Moved and seconded. Any more discussion? Questions. Questions been called. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Contrary? Motion carried. Does there anything else you need on that one? Nope. Good. Okay. Um, fisheries notions request for fish package Lake Milo dams. Go ahead. Oh, you're on. Your light just turned on. Do you want to? My, well, no, I want to hear what he's got to say, but I just, okay. before everybody gets, yep. I like to be in the yep, first, in the, first <laughs> in the queue. You like you to know? be in the queue. You're yeah. in the queue. Uh, that basically is for information. Uh, they want to make sure that we had a, a monitoring program. And, yeah. uh, you know, there was some miscommunication, I think. I talked to uh, Chad uh, earlier today about that, that they were aware that we had a plan on file here. And, and for quite a while, they were. I rehearsed all my words today. I got to at least say it. They, they were fine with that. Uh, last year, we obviously had an issue there at the dam with water flow, and I think that, that spurred the request for it. So uh, it's, it's been satisfied. I think we're, we're okay. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, being a retired federal fishery officer and had a lot to do with this uh, particular Milton Dam along with the work that I used to do, conservation and protection, I would say that, and I'm glad to hear that uh, we're adhering to what the request is from the Department of Fisheries and Oceans, because un under their act, they can be pretty, pretty, pretty rough, or they can be pretty lenient, and I think that the letter is self-explanatory in itself, and, and uh, I'll, I'll just leave, I'll, I'll leave it at that, because some of the comments from one of our employees doesn't match up with what they really wanted. So uh, I'm, I'm glad that you got a clarity on it and uh, we're going forward with their recommendations. It's great, thank you. Good. Councillor Dennis. DFO says Gaspero upstream migration usually occurs in March through June. So why are we only monitoring from April to June? Uh, is there a reason we leave out March? We could just, well, we could justifiably only do one month. We don't have to do the whole. Oh, go ahead, Chad. No, back in 2014, when we received the request to implement a monitoring program, um, I think we were already into April. Okay. And I actually performed the monitoring myself. And um, we didn't observe uh, any fish migration until, I think it was until late April, early May. So I think they're saying, generally speaking, that's the period that the fish migrate, but it was my observation that they only migrated here during that particular time was for, I think, the two or three weeks, so. Okay. But checks will be done just to make sure they're. Yeah, for sure, yeah. Okay, thank you.
grants to organizations decision. That's the fish one. There's the grants. CAL. Okay, so uh, we have. Um, We've reviewed the applications. We've all submitted, I say we, you have all submitted uh, spreadsheets to Linda. Linda has summarized them on the document attached to the agenda. And on the far right hand, there is the average contribution uh, from the uh, seven uh, counts, sorry, six counselors and the mayor. So normally what we would do, uh, or normally what our practice has been in the past, is that we round them to the nearest $10 and uh, approve the grants in those amounts. So that's for your consideration. Good. Councillor McIsaac? Thank you, Your Worship. <clears throat> you, you might want to think it's probably election year or something, all the talking we're doing around here. Uh, well, let me say I haven't counted it out. <laughs> <laughs> is it election year this year? Is it 26? Is it October the 16th, 2016? My, bro my brochure is built in July. Uh, anyway, I just want to thank uh, thank Linda for all the hard work she's done on this. I know I probably talked her ear off calling her four or five times, and uh, she's done a great job. And I just like to thank you, Linda, personally. And I know that probably the rest. I wouldn't speak for the rest of the staff, but I'm sure that they uh, also thank you. We do. Oh. Your Worship, I just, um, I could be wrong, but I just want to make sure, Your Worship, are you comfortable with your column? I, I don't want to ask that because there was an email that went around regarding the ARC, and I don't see that change, and I'm just wondering. Oh, no, mine is. You're happy with there's that? There's eight. Oh, well, on the yeah, one that's on the website, it isn't, so. Oh, yeah, fix that. Gee, I don't want, yeah. So she had, there was a, a letter yeah. in there instead, so she must have. Yeah, there was a K, in. there's a K there, and K I'm just there. wondering, it's, yeah, yeah, so I'm just wondering. But it's in this one that yeah. I have. Yeah, okay, good, as long as it's Can right. Can you fix it the website? Yeah, so Linda's yeah. saying that the one on the website is updated. Well, the one that I've just fired up here says under the, the arc, it's got a K in it. Oh, it's been, ref oh, I can refresh? Okay, sorry about that. Okay, we're all happy, good. Is it, can you see it now? Well, I'm just gonna go back and reopen it again. I wanna, I wanna make Still sure. Still a K. All right, just want to make sure because I'm not going to vote for it. If it's, yeah. Oh, sorry, just go ahead. I'm sorry. I just want to make sure. No, no, I want to make sure that it's on the website, which Linda says it is. Yeah. Is that it? Yeah. What's under the agenda? Yeah. Going back to agenda. Yeah, there. Is it there? Okay, good. Okay, sorry, just want to make sure. Yeah. Good. Well, that's the only thing I saw on mine that was, but she had tried to put it in. Okay, so any other questions on this? Nope. Sounds great. Good. Make a motion we approve the grants to organize, recommend the approval of the grants to organizations as submitted. <coughs> moved and seconded. Any more? Oh, sorry. Go no, ahead, Deputy. Not. Okay. Moved and seconded. Questions. Any more discussion? Questions, questions have been called. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those in favor? Aye. 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 Contrary? No motion carried. All right. Tiny houses. Councillor Mooney. Thank you, Your Worship, and uh, I had a talk with Caroline earlier, and I'd like to make the following motion. And, and Caroline, did you send that correspondence? I know you sent something to me. Did you send it to the other councillors as well? The one about Halifax, the hydro stone? Yes, yes, uh, yeah. No. Can you, you can do that, though? Yeah, I can. Okay. Um, I'd like to make the following motion, Your Worship, direct staff to incorporate tiny home regulations through the land use bylaw and the municipal planning strategy. And maybe Caroline can say a couple of words. Um, that's to, that's at one of the uh, conferences I went to in, in Ottawa. Um, this was brought up, so just something that I brought back to the community, so they can see that I'm actually working and listening and comprehending what's going on in a uh, in a conference-like setting. Yeah. But Caroline, maybe just a couple of words. And I know you had a conversation with somebody that was interested in in doing something like this. Go ahead. Um, it, it's just a really cool idea for affordable housing and, and something that uh, creates accessible housing for our aging population. And the idea is that there are small homes, uh, usually under about 500 square feet, that are put in a group community type setting. They usually have some shared facilities and that kind of thing. 
And there's a neat development that I shared with Phil that's happening in Halifax, um, being done by the developer, I believe his name is Lynch, um, that somebody sent to me and I just thought was really interesting. So, uh, Right now, our current planning policies don't allow group dwelling, group type dwellings to happen. Um, so the idea would be that it would be multiple tiny homes on one lot. It wouldn't be subdivided and they would have those shared facilities. Um, we also have an uh, architectural design features standard that uh, prevents homes that are basically long and skinny uh, from happening, so that prevents this type of development as well. Go ahead, uh, Deputy. That's okay. I was just going to ask, uh, we make a motion to approve of uh, the Tiny, tiny homes construction of, as, as Caroline has described. Do we discuss this, Caroline, at PAC and incorporate it if approved uh, at, in the MPS? Yeah, I think this would just be part of the regular municipal planning strategy review that's happening right now, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So the motion will be to refer to the PAC. On the end, refer to the PAC. Yeah, who seconded that? You good with that? Okay. And I'm thrilled you're doing that because I have no idea what they are, how they're going to fit in, and I'm kind of thinking my neighbor suddenly puts 55 tiny homes in her backyard, uh, you know, <laughs> thinking what on earth are we doing? We'd problem. It sounds like chicken coops all over again. So I want to be a little bit careful. So thank you for that, uh, Deputy Mayor, and welcome, uh, Mr. Barrow. Hi. Good. So motions on the floor. Any more discussion? Questions been called. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Contrary. Motion carried. <coughs> Closed streets. I think, uh, your Worship, I think this is something we dealt uh, with at the last council meeting, if I'm right, Caroline. I think you are already working on this. So I don't have to address this right now. I think we can take it off the, uh, the agenda. Yes, this would be the switch open street concept that yeah. was brought up. Which I learned in Ottawa again. There's two things. So, But she's working on this already. I think we passed that at the last council meeting. Correspondence for action. <coughs> Hospital Foundation Spring Gala. So they are looking to see if we want to sponsor. Go ahead. Mr. Worship, I think this is an excellent uh, activity. However, I really feel that as individual counselors, if we wish to go, we go and pay our way and Life is good. I mean, I think uh, Councillor McIsaac brought this up last year. Uh, uh, I, I don't think we need to sponsor a, a table. I know we used to in the past, but uh, I know what I heard quite a bit of flack that taxpayers' money is being used for us to attend social functions. So uh, I would suggest that we refer it and place. I'd like to move it, be referred, and place on file. No, huh. oh, he'll be coming to me. Bill, that is okay. Yep. Also, just to uh, confirm, we're making a capital donation to the uh, charitable foundation on a regular, yearly basis. Yeah. And I know, and I know through the years that, well, I for one have attended that, haven't missed a, a, a an event at all. So, I support the motion and second. Okay. Moved and seconded. Any more discussion? Questions been called. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Contrary, motion carried. Maple Grove Education Center request. Sorry, go ahead. This is a thread, this is an excellent request uh, coming from Maple Grove. It actually made sense to do this. Uh, you're asking for the four basketball basketball seats or the ones that are uh, on the sides of the assembly class and what was exchanged for the final assembly class. Oh, why? It'd be nice to, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, he was keeping it on. It's an election year. Uh, so anyway, the, uh, the idea would be that there's four, there's four in there. I, I was wondering, your, your worship, on this, if the CAO, we, 
what are we going to do with those glass backboards? Because those are, are beautiful backboards for, for somebody to use. They're very expensive when they were put in, and it's something maybe the CAO may want to explore. But I would make a motion that we uh, accept uh, the, the uh, request from Amanda Brewer with Maple Grove Education Center that the town um, uh, get, re give permission for the four basketball backboards and rims located at the old Yarmouth High School gymnasium to go to the outdoor basketball courts at Maple Grove Education Center. Seconded, any discussion? Right. Questions been called? Yeah? There's no problem with that, Jeff. Yeah. No? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Contrary? Motion carried. Your light's on. What are the glass boards? Yep, the glass boards. So uh, we've had no direction to to part out any of the fixed assets, I guess. So we haven't we haven't done that. You know, if if there are if there's a desire uh, to to do that, uh, we could for sure. Uh, I think the decision you just made around those side bass ports is perfectly fine. Keeps an asset in the community. If somebody approached us about the glass backboards, uh, we'd bring that forward as well. Uh, unless council wants us to be proactive and make a list and shop it around, uh, you know, uh, but on a request by request basis, by all means, we'll bring it forward. Okay. Uh, That's okay. Just, just a, a quick, one quick thought on this is, uh, we have a recreation department. Is there anything in that building that could be used with from our recre recreation department? But there, there was glass, the glass nets, or anything in that building at all that's got anything to do with recreation that they could look through and see what they could use. I know there was a pop machine there. There was different things there, different assets that were there. Is there anything that we could use for Milo Boat Club or any any of our properties or anything or Mariner Center or whatever, uh, you know, down the road? Just a thought. Yeah, I'm pretty sure uh, Frank has been, the director has been through the building, uh, one of our walkthroughs. Uh, he hasn't come back with any specific requests, so uh, just like this request from Maple Grove, if there was a specific request, and uh, you know, there's no reason why we couldn't uh, couldn't accommodate as long as we're not you know, taking things out that might be integral to reuse of the building. No, I don't think the backboards fall into that category. Go ahead. Yeah, Your Worship. There's two items there that. Um, that, that interest me besides the glass backboards. The question is, CAO, does the old junior high gym have glass backboards? I couldn't remember. That's something we should check into to see if they have them of that quality because these ones, the ones that we have are retractables that are at the high school are retractables on, on motors that bring them miraculously up. And the second observation to the CAO is the bleachers. Um, there are, those are fairly new bleachers that were put in there, and I mean like 15 years old. And I'm wondering, with a little bit of weld, you would have permanent outdoor bleachers somewhere if we ever needed bleachers anywhere, because those are fold-up bleachers, but you could easily have those welded solid into a solid unit, and that maybe could be used. Now, as a thought, you you know, to be put on a spot, I don't know what our, if our playgrounds, if you're talking to Mr. Grant, if any of the playgrounds or ball fields need bleachers, I mean, I hate to see them go in the dump, but on the other, or they should say the landfill or the waste park or whatever it's called nowadays, uh, but maybe those two areas we should explore. <laughs> Go ahead, CAO. Yeah, we could let uh, let Mr. Grant know those those couple of ideas, and uh, you know, if, uh, if there's interest, and you know, like I say, we'll we'll bring it forward. So did we move? Did we do the motion for the two backboards? Okay, for the other backboards. Okay. All right. So we're on town of Clark's Harbor. So they are looking for $150 towards an event to celebrate the Coast Guard. I, I actually have no problem with it. It's a, they've served, they have served us well. Go ahead. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, Jeff, we have, it's coming into the budget year and that, and I know things are tight. Do we have, a, do we have $150, $150 left in our grants organizations? Can we squeeze that in there somewhere or out of that? I, I don't want to jump ahead and answer that one. Jerry, do we have $150? <coughs> yes. Okay. okay so. Then I move we, uh, we accept the offer from uh, town of Clarks Harbor and grant them their $150. 
Moved and seconded. Any discussion? Uh, well, it, it could have been $150,000. So uh, just because it's only 150 doesn't mean no, it's but the not money. The question was, do we have it left in the grant? That's what I asked, yeah. <coughs> yeah. And we have to go through that procedure. We do. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Contrary? Motion carried. No, oh, there's nothing wrong with the question. Okay. We are at UNSM Success Stories, Economic Development or Shared Services. So go ahead. Your Worship, I read this and I think this is absolutely an incredible opportunity for our community. Um, we have three municipal units, uh, ourselves, District of Yarmouth and District of Argyle, who've worked very closely together. And we're probably one of the more amalgamated, unamalgamated areas in the province. Um, and I really think a lot of people need to know just how well we've done. And I mean, we get our CAOs who work very closely together on a lot of projects, and I would love to see one of them, uh, or all of them, attend this as, and give the submission on how these, how our units have functioned together over the years, you know, from everything from solid waste to water to a whole raft of things that we do together, the airport, the, the, the wharves, all this stuff. I think this is a success story that needs to be said. And I don't know, Your Worship, you travel way better than I and around the province, but I don't think there's many units, three units working as tight together as we do. And I think this is something we should do. So I, I want to make a motion. That, that staff explore or staff, staff submit, that our CAO, I'm gonna be specific here, our CAO in conjunction with other CAOs and the three, two other CAOs, if they're agreeing to look at putting together a showcase of particular success stories related to economic development uh, to the UNSM workshop planning committee uh, by March 7th, which is like Monday. Uh, which is kind of tight, but uh, I got a feeling they'll probably give an extension if we need be. So uh, that's my motion. So, so I'm on the planning committee for this, yeah, and good. we wanted to just be able to show, to showcase, like you yeah. said, yeah. to be able to showcase. So even if you came up with a couple, mm -hmm. and, and I think Alain has yeah. a, the, the tax piece with the Mariner Center, yeah. Yeah. because it's so. In the airport. New and yeah. so the province loves it. Yeah. You know, everybody loves it. So yeah. that would be one. I don't think it's going to take much effort. No, no. Right. I don't cooperate. <laughs> <laughs> will, they, will they cooperate with us with Lake George, do you wonder? Okay. <laughs> uh, you're going to a conference. Question? All those in favor? Uh, Aye. Contrary? It's the, uh, <coughs> Excuse the, uh, me. Success Motion stories. Carry. Success stories. <laughs> Broadband questions for municipalities? So basically, <coughs> excuse me. Is that you coughing like that? It's, yeah, can't get rid of it. But I'm not going down for the count, so <laughs> hang on. You going down too? CAO? Yeah, so we received these questions. I had given them to Natalie uh, to get her responses, which she did provide and I shared through email. So if council is satisfied with those, have any questions, Natalie is here. Uh, otherwise, we can submit those as your answers if you wish. Mm -hmm. Yep, perfect. Good. Anybody have any questions for Natalie on this? No. no. Just no. want to get our answers in. Fair yeah. is fair. Happy, happy, Joy. Okay. So a motion to submit the responses as per the Economic Development Officer's survey. Okay. Thank you. Moved and seconded. Question. Question's been called. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Contrary? Motion carried. Request for presentation, Clean Ocean Action Committee. Yeah, uh, well, <clears throat> you want me to speak to it? Yeah, I can. So, so Bernie Berry came in and, uh, and he's with this group and you can see, you can see on your sheets here the membership and, and how wide it's extended. They just really want us to be aware of, of the two sites that they have really grave concerns with um, when it comes to you know the offshore drilling and all those things. So they just asked if they could come in, uh, present if we have any questions, great. If not, good too, but they'll be looking, I, I assume they will be looking for, for some type of support 
um, with regard to those two sites. Second, did you have a question, Dan? <coughs> Deputy? I had a question. I, I spoke with uh, <coughs> Bernie Berry recently. I wondered, just asking uh, Jeff, uh, should we come, should this maybe come not only to council but to the Waterfront Development Corporation meeting at a presentation there too with uh, three major stakeholders that could be present or can we consider inviting them to come to our council meeting? So that's right. If, if this group comes and presents to council, it's an open meeting, it's streamed, and anybody can come and take in the presentation. So, and we can specifically invite, if you wish, your, your, your board to come and be part of the audience. Yep. You want it? <coughs> When's March 24th. Is that committee the whole? Who's not here March 24? I'm back on. When are you going? Here. You're here? Yeah. <coughs> yeah. Yeah. They, okay. Okay. So, so let's try for the committee of the whole for the end of March. Get them in. They just got a little bit of a deadline in case it comes up at the next meeting that they're at. <coughs> Moved and seconded. Any discussion? Questions. Questions been called. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, Aye. Go ahead. Yeah, my only comment on that is is you know it is it is your practice not to make decisions on the day of a presentation, and you might consider upholding that by calling a special council meeting maybe the next week to, to consider what you've heard and maybe you've received some feedback in the interim from the community rather than yeah, starting a new that. precedent of, of making yeah. decisions on presentation no. night. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. And the thought was that, Linda, we tried, we tried to figure out when that date in April that they had to have. Because I told them we can't make it. Okay. We did tell them that, that we couldn't make a decision that day. I just, that's just to add, just yeah. to add, just a little bit to this. Th th this organization is not a new organization. Uh, th they've been preaching, the, preaching this for a, quite a few years, and it, and it's it's good. I'm I'm with them 101 percent. Uh, it's uh, it's something that I I've heard before, and I've read before, and I'm well aware of it. And I know there's probably a lot of a lot of the public fishing community is well aware of it, and what it can affect. And uh, we've also heard from the, you know, the petroleum side of it, uh, which they're already off of Halifax, uh, off the uh, Shelburne, Scotia Shelf, off there drilling and doing some, uh, some, and some studies there for oils and stuff. So, but th this here is, is, is will be good. Uh, it'll be a refresher to let people know that they are still involved and, and we should be confident of what, what, the, what they're doing and what could happen out there. So I think it's a good thing, the sooner the better, and, and I'm in agreement with if we have to have a special meeting, whatever it is, that we probably should do that. But I, I'm all for this, thank you. <coughs> Excuse me, okay. So we're good? He asked a reallocation of event funds, reallocation. Uh, Go ahead, Councillor. Go ahead. Um, yeah, I, first question I have is, um, is, is, is there a fair difference between, I'm suspecting, between a mixed curling championship and music week with numbers of people? I mean, I, I, I don't really recall that much detail on the mixed curling championships, but have A, my first question to CAO or to finance officers, have we put a commitment of money there already? And B, how much is that? And C, uh, what is the payback to the community of the mixed curling versus the uh, music week? I'm just wondering. I'm, I mean, we've had some curling championships here before. I didn't see. There's a nice impact, but not a dramatic impact. Yeah. Well, I was going to ask, <coughs> and I had a conversation, and this might solve the whole problem. I had a conversation with Jerry this morning. Um, they're talking about money that would have been real, that would have been allocated to Music Week for next year, 
but that would have came out of next year's budget. So we would have had a budget for that money, but we haven't, since we're not gonna have music week, we're not gonna budget for the money anyways, right? So um, unless the request was um, the fundraising is not going as well as we expected, and we would like you to consider 5000 or $6,000 for next year, but here they say we want you to reallocate money that we haven't budgeted for for next year because we're not having the event. So it's like uh, you guys aren't buying a new fire truck, so there's a 400000 Why don't we split it and go buy something else? Isn't it? There's no difference, right? Exactly. Yeah, that, and, and, and actually, if you saw that in the paper today with Cook's Aquaculture, um, yeah. The government said since the program didn't go through and the development didn't go through and the plan expansion didn't go through, we allocated that money to somebody else. So um, it's, I think it's a moot point because we would have just had to, we would have had to allocate the money next year for the budget anyways and that's, you know, we can't be doing, doing that. I think we, and, and we honored their original request, CAO, I believe. We honored their original request. We are yeah. Okay. Okay. No. 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 Wait a sec. Okay. Plain English. Because I'm. Is anybody else missing? Like, you guys get this? Okay. But I'm just. We. Right? We. But, but I'm just. I understand what he's asking. I'm just. Phil's putting that on the table, and I'm trying to wrap my head. Remember, we had the conversation at lunch. Yeah. Me and numbers. Okay. Yeah. So. Plain English. Plain English, we made a commitment to the mixed uh, curling, $15,000 over three years, so $5,000 a year. Uh, I, didn't, I didn't verify this, but I assume it is correct that we made a commitment of 6666 towards Music Week next fiscal year, which we would have, as uh, the councillor said, had in next year's budget which we haven't put together yet. So uh, I guess the real question is, I mean, we cut to the chase, the real question is they're asking for another $6,666 for the mixed curling. So to Councillor Langell's questions, yes, we've made a commitment and I've expressed what it is. I cannot comment on uh, the relative benefits of Music Week versus the mixed curling. I've never been to one of those events, uh, to, and, and nor have I, other than uh, Rick's presentation, uh, heard anybody speak to it specifically. I did talk to somebody who's been to a number of national curling events as a coach, and his, his comment, frankly, was that you're better off to have a junior event uh, because the mixed event, you know, is, it's not, the highest profile and it doesn't bring the families with it. So uh, it is a good opportunity for us to try curling at the Mariner Center as a, at a national stage and maybe open the door to something else larger. You, you, you know, walk before you run, uh, but I'm not sure how it compares to Music Week. Okay. Thank you, uh, thank you, Worship. Uh, thank you, Jeff. Um, and I'm, again, exactly on the same pa page as uh, Councillor Mooney on this one. This money is coming out of a budget we haven't even crafted yet. We haven't put together the numbers, so therefore we don't need that in the budget at all. We've already been very generous. We've given them their request, which is 5,000. The way I'm reading the letter, they're using this as an insurance policy, just in case the province doesn't pony up 30,000. Uh, it's an if and if and if. I think, frankly, if, I think, to me, I think we should deny the request. Uh, and if they do find themselves requiring more resources, then they'll have to collect any other time, come back to talk to us like Councillor Mooney suggested. But uh, I'm uncomfortable with this because uh, we have other things that we can commit to, and that's a fairly substantial chunk of change uh, because that'll, that'll change our ante to uh, 21,000 in five, 20, 21,666, and that's a, that's a fair amount of money for for an event over three or four days when you consider how much we give to CFES and other groups like that. So I'm, I'm not uh, in support of the request. Okay, <clears throat> so the question is, do we need a motion to direct you guys to send a letter to him and saying no? Okay, so, okay. So the motion would be to direct staff to advise um, Rick Allwright with Okay. 
Linda, you good with that? Does everybody understand the motion? Question. Okay, question's been called. All those in favor? Oh, uh, I need a seconder. Second. Moved and seconded. Uh, question's been called. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Contrary? Motion carried. Okay, previously distributed. Was there anything in there? We're good? Okay. Again, Your Worship, uh, again, this could be more to uh, the planner or to Chad. Um, those amendments to the Nova Scotia Building Code regulations um, that are in there, is that of any interest to us or is that something we should be concerned with or is that just a motherhood thing? Uh, to be honest, I don't know what we have now and I'm just wondering is it something that we need to respond to? Um, these are the proposed amendments. I'm just curious about that. Where do we stand? Uh, as, as I read it, the, uh, the pro proposed changes uh, uh, have to do with on-site sewage, sewage disposal systems, which really don't impact on the town of Yarmouth. Okay. okay. Additions, traffic authority. <coughs> CAO. Your Worship, I would ask that uh, Council consider the appointment of uh, Staff Sergeant Michelle Lacroix as our interim traffic authority. So moved. Second. All, any more discussion? Question. Question's been called. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Contrary? Motion carried. <clears throat> I just added the climate change, and only in that um, I think uh, the federal government just put $75 million on the table. I'm not sure the logistics of it, except, um, well, my son, the, my son called and said you better have at that. So, um, how do we go about seeing if we fit into any of these funds? We just direct staff to look into it. Okay. So I am looking for a motion to direct staff to look into acquiring funds for the climate change initiative set forth by the federal government. <clears throat> Moved and seconded. Any discussion? Question. Question's been called. All those in favor? Aye. Contrary? Motion carried. The Englobe proposal, CAO, we all have that as an extra attachment. <laughs> you feel okay? <laughs> all right. So we have a proposal here uh, from Englobe. Englobe are the consultants that we used uh, for the water testing up at uh, 2014 Lake George Road. Uh, as we all know, they did find some contamination that we were previously unaware of. And uh, so their proposal here is to do further investigation, uh, including uh, water sampling, drilling, digging, uh, trying to establish sources and the extent of uh, the contamination. I direct your attention to, uh, so, so the content here uh, was circulated, uh, a draft of it was circulated uh, yesterday to you to understand what the program entailed. There is a new page, which is the last page, which <laughs> outlines the, the fee proposal. And I apologize, I only received this uh, just before the meeting and uh, Linda copied it. So it's very small print. Yeah. But basic, well, I can see the bottom line. That's yeah, the okay, so the, bot <laughs> bot the, bot the bottom line is what's important here. Uh, understanding that, that some of this is based on estimates. So uh, the direct town of Yarmouth uh, charges are outlined in, in table one, the things that we would pay for directly, so there's no markup on those. <clears throat> Uh, from, from a third party. That's an estimate of what that would come to. Uh, in globe expenses and then, and then the fees and those are outlined in table uh, two and three. So the total uh, with HST is estimated to come <coughs> in at $94,924.43. And again, I want to stress that this is all related to the discovery of the groundwater contamination, uh, the lead and the phenols that were discovered uh, 
in the, uh, in the water samples that were taken. Uh, and uh, we really, as I understand it, have little choice. That's for your consideration. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, I just a quick question for the CAO and maybe the solicitor. Now, where would this money be coming? Uh, the land was acquired, I believe, by the town, it was by the town of Yarmouth, but then in somewhere I read that it was also water utility was involved. I'm wondering, would this be a water utility item or is this a town <laughs> item? Because it, the deed now shows the property as the town of Yarmouth, but I believe all the holdings of the water utility, I suggest, are in the town of Yarmouth name, I think. So I'm just trying to get a handle as to, is this a utility item, if we own it, as the water utility, or is it a town of Yarmouth item? That's my first question for the okay, CAO. I let, uh, yeah, go ahead. So uh, I'll, I'll tackle that one and say that the town of Yarmouth has title to the property. Uh, the purpose of the town of Yarmouth holding the property is because a large portion of it is, is within the watershed, and so it's part of our overall strategy to protect the, the source water. Uh, you know, as far as who pays for this or from mm -hmm. where we take the money, I think that is a, that I think we have some discretion there. Mm -hmm. And uh, I haven't looked. I just saw this just before the meeting, so I haven't really uh, given much consideration to where or how to to allocate the cost. Well, I make a motion, Your Worship, that the the town of Yarmouth and or the Yarmouth Water Utility uh, accept the proposal from NGLOBE for the amount of $94,924.43 to do the testing uh, at, with our property at 2014 Lake George Road. I'll second that motion, Your Worship. Seconded, and Councillor Mooney, your light's on as Yeah, well, and um, this is probably has, <laughs> it, it, all, in, all in the same line is, uh, Jeff, you sent us an excellent, uh, report, excellent uh, summation of what's happened over the last little bit and what's going to be going on in the Lake George area. Is that, uh, you sent it to each individual councillor, if I can look up there, and I don't know who else, uh, to council. Is that, could that be something for public information? Could you put that on the website? Because I think it's a great point by point assessment of, of, of what's going to happen and, and what you're expecting to do over the next little bit, and I don't think there's any um, and, that, and that's from Avon Cole, that, that one there. Oh, uh, that is actually... That's incorporated? That's a draft of, that's a draft of this. So okay, know. okay, good, okay. So this is all... So it's the same, the basically the same yeah. thing. Okay, good. And we'll let the residents know that yeah. that's... So, Your Worship, we, we created a, uh, a space on our existing website, and obviously when we migrate to the new website, it will be mirrored there, but a place where we're putting the reports and the information about uh, the Lake George situation. So uh, we, will, we will post this document. So, again, you know, keeping the things transparent and open uh, so people can see what we're up to. Okay, good. Thank you. And that's, uh, that's a great summation of, of the work that she's done so far, I and mean, hopefully this is a next step. Can I have that, by the way? I gave mine to the press. Do you need it? Oh, good. Okay, Councillor Landfill. Thank you, Your Worship. And I, I, must, uh, I must commend uh, the consultants for the speed of this. I see the workers beginning on March 14th, uh, lasting six to 10 days, and they're gonna have results uh, fairly tight, which in three weeks we'll have a draft report. So that is, that is wonderful news. I also want to uh, acknowledge the fact uh, that this hopefully, and this is my question for the CAO, do you think this is going to pretty well settle what we have up there or what we don't have up there? Or are we looking at further testing down the road? And, um, and my second question is, will these drilled wells, these monitor wells, I assume they're going to be left in place and I assume we'll have a regular testing schedule for those in the future? And, you know, maybe once a year just doing water testing in those wells or what is the, the plans for those wells? I can pretty much guarantee this won't be the end of the testing, uh, but uh, hopefully this will give us enough information that we that we know what we need to do in terms of uh, remediation. Uh, as far as this, the wells being left in place, I see that is very likely, very likely that, that they'll be remain. And again, as far as the testing goes, I think we we work with our consultants to get their advice in terms of future testing regimes and schedules and so on and, and follow their advice. 
Councillor Dennis. Just have a question on will uh, our uh, insurance cover any of any of this? Question. Uh, I have been in touch with our insurer and they're aware of the situation. They appreciate that. And uh, uh, anything along, along those lines, I think we should probably move in camera and, and discuss. Okay. okay. Go ahead. Your Worship, um, just looking at this because we just got it today, um, and I'm just glancing over it on the, on the ground water sampling. I trust in this there will be testing done of water in the cove or in the area around the lake. Uh, from what I'm seeing, it seems to be limited primarily to the soil area um, on the property, but I'm wondering, uh, there's a concern uh, from some of our users of the lake water that there could have been some leaching into that. From what we understand, that's not happening and from the tests we've done, but I'm wondering if uh, this company is going to be keeping in mind the delicacy of the watershed itself, just to see where we stand with that. So I, uh, I do have a draft response for you on the motion that was made at the last council meeting concerning testing of the lake. And uh, Rob's response, I think, is, is quite, quite good and, and probably will cover off that concern. As far as where they're going to test, I mean, they, I, I trust, they, as you do, that they know the proximity uh, and the concern about the lake. Uh, as far as where they, uh, where they drill, where they test, and so on, uh, you know, I'm pretty sure with the amount we're spending here, it'll be comprehensive, but we, won't, we, we will mention the concern. And, uh, okay. <coughs> Councillor McCarthy. Thank you. Just a quick question for the CAO. Does, by letting this contract uh, to the, the, uh, the specialist that we use, uh, is that going to satisfy provincial and federal agencies like the... the uh, the agencies that were out there uh, at the night of the Lake George presentations that they were given, I think Department of Environment and uh, were, there, were those the provincial and federal, I think they were. Just federal. no federal, just provincial. Is the federal involved in this where it's uh, yet. not yet? No, but I mean, could they, or could they be? And, and are, are these tests, they, they would meet the requirement of the information, hopefully, through the provincial environment, and hopefully if federal gets involved, them also. I don't know if you know I, that. I or don't not. know that there's any any federal jurisdiction on this. I think this is provincial. And yeah, because uh, it, it's provincial lakes, unless there's salmon or something like that in there or right. trout. Uh, at this point, <laughs> at this point, it's provincial. Okay. Uh, we have been, uh, you know, obviously very open and transparent with the citizens. We met with them yesterday and went over this proposal with Avon. Uh, so they had a chance to ask any questions they had. Uh, we are as open um, and want to be completely open with the Department of Environment on this. Uh, communication with them is a little more <laughs> a little more challenging. They they have a lot of files, I'm sure, that they're busy with, and so we'd like to engage them every step of the way and make sure that everything we do meets all their requirements. But I'm pretty sure that this that this does. Uh, End Globe. Uh, this is the business they're in, and uh, you know this might be uh, beyond what the requirements of the of the government are. But I think it is within. I think it's reasonable to determine what our problems are. And frankly, uh, talking to the residents and hearing some of the uh, tales or stories that are in the community about that property, uh, it's it's uh, pretty concerning. And uh, the level of effort that's being proposed here should help to either confirm those stories or, or find, find, find the truth and, and uh, find out what we have to do next. <coughs> what was the... Did we pass that, Linda? Yeah, we voted on that. Okay, uh, Barbara and Craig. Uh, <coughs> oh, Councillor Dennis, did you have a question? Huh? That's okay. I'll, I'm, I'm good. Go ahead. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. I'd like to make a motion. We send our heartfelt congratulations to Barbara Webster and Craig LeBlanc from the Municipality of Aramith on their Volunteer of the Year awards. <laughs> Moved and seconded. Discussion? Question. Question's been called. All those in favor? 
Aye. Contrary. Motion carries. And you're away. Because and I'm away. away. Yeah. And I, I was. I. And I would have said go in my stead oh, yeah. because oh, that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I would have gladly. Um, yeah. That's too bad that you're away. Uh, Councillor Dennis, did you? I just had a question on the removal of the compost. Um, does the removing of the compost interfere with the tests or anything that do, uh, that Avon from Englobe are going to be doing? It's probably the other way around. I think the work that uh, that Avon and our people up there are planning to do is more likely to impact on the compost, and so uh, that's something that uh, I'll be discussing with Chad in terms of how do we make sure that the drilling rigs and the excavators have access without uh, making a bigger mess out of an existing mess. So. Okay. so that means we'll probably start moving that out of there soon? I'm not going to tell you what that means. It means I'm going to have a discussion. Okay. <laughs> My other question is, when we do remove that, where are we putting it? That hasn't been determined yet. Um, obviously, uh, <clears throat> it's a substance, it's a material that uh, should not have been moved off the site where it was, but it was moved off the site um, mistakenly and uh, putting it back there would require approval from the Department of Environment, so we're working to, with them to figure out uh, what, the, uh, what the best option is. Now, uh, you know, what we do with it after we move it is, is part of the equation as well, because I think the best thing to do with it once it is moved is to screen it and dispose of the garbage and uh, reclaim anything of value uh, from the stuff. There's, there's a lot of it, um, and I think there's a lot of it that's of value, but it's very difficult to recla reclaim that value if it's wet. So wherever it goes, it needs to have the opportunity to reach a level of uh, dryness that makes screening practical. So. So We're working with Paul and, and, and the department staff to, to figure it out. We don't have the answers yet. Mm. So would it be good to start actually have a bulldozer out there to actually put it, pile it up, and wouldn't that help it dry up at the top? Again, uh, you know, that's, that's an idea, and uh, I don't know if that's a good idea or not, but yeah. uh, it's an well, idea. It's we got good weather right now, so. Reasonably good. Wait till the wet. weekend. <laughs> the weekend. Yeah, All during right. the weekend. Thank you. It's not harmful, though that's what's important. It just doesn't look good. <clears throat> okay, so are we good? Yes. And so the additions are finished. We still have property matter in camera? We have property matter. Okay. Oh, and we got to do the budget. I knew we were CAO. <laughs> look at everybody. Look at them Where scattered. are you guys going? <laughs> If you're not here, you don't get budgeted. <laughs> yeah. No attendance, no budget line. <laughs> uh, I, can, I can do this. I want to do an abbreviated version. I'm having a little sinus trouble today, which is making talking quite uncomfortable. But yep. um, I will do an abbreviated version if you wish. Let's give her. Right. No, we're doing the budget thing. You good? I am good. I don't know if you can hear me or not. Um, we probably can't hear you very well, but... All right, we'll stick this right in my face. Right in your face. Right good. in my face. Thank you. Okay, so I'm going to run through this fairly quickly uh, this year. It's just to give you some information prior to getting into the budget uh, about sort of where we stand. Um, so it's internal indicators as well as external indicators. This information is how we stand relative to other towns in terms of our size uh, characteristics uh, compared to other towns in Nova Scotia. So uh, just as an example, dwelling units, uh, the average town has 1,815 dwelling units. Our town has 3,491. Indicates that we are on the larger size of, of the towns in Nova Scotia. In fact, we're the fifth largest town in Nova Scotia. Uh, out of uh, what was 30 is probably down to about 27 now. We probably need more streetlights than they have. Yeah, they that's right. Going. So to 
total municipal operating budget, the average, oops, the average town, uh, their operating budget is 7.2 million, ours is 17.2 million. Uh, taxable property assessment, the average town is 218 million, ours is 406 million, so about twice the, the assessment value of, of the average town. Uh, changes in population, again, this hasn't changed from last year, it's not, not updated, but I guess a couple of key things here is that our population decline has been faster in the last uh, census period than, than the average town in Nova Scotia. And the median household income in, in the town of Yarmouth is uh, somewhat below the average for towns. So ours is at 34,572, where the average median income uh, for, for the average town is 46,000. So internal indicators. So this, this chart shows you the trend in the percentage change in taxable assessment for residential. So at the uh, at the two percent line, so anything that hits the two percent line, so two percent would indicate that your tax tax assessment has increased by two percent. And as you can see in 2016, last year, our residential tax assessment was marginally above zero percent. This year it's marginally below zero percent, which means we're actually seeing a decrease in taxable assessment on the residential side. <coughs> this is your residential tax rates. And this goes back to 2006, so an 11 year history of t residential tax rates. The number we've plugged for, 20 gosh, for 2017 is actually reflective of our plan for the phase out of the subsidy to the wastewater treatment. So if everything was equal and we made no other adjustments, the residential tax rate would, would come down to $1.67. Now I want to point out that the residential tax rate decreasing like this and the residential tax assessment increase decreasing like this, overall if nothing else changes, that's not really a sustainable scenario. So this chart shows you the difference between uh, taxable assessment and market assessment over the past nine, ten years. And so what you see is, is the cap effect, the gap between the taxable assessment, the lower line, and the market assessment, which is the upper line. That, that gap is how much, tax, how much residential assessment is not being taxed year to year. And what you should notice there is that the gap became fairly wide fairly quickly over a three year period and over the last five years has actually been decreasing. So the cap uh, effect on us has, has been decreasing to the point now where it's, it's almost negligible and not significant. So we talk about the cap and should remove the cap or whatever. It really is having less and less impact on the town of Yarmouth and for the past few years has actually been probably helping us a, to a yeah, small degree. That's the point. Yeah. So the widest point I'm looking at 2010 as, as where I think it probably is and you're probably looking at uh, 15 million dollars of residential assessment not being taxed and I'll turn to the director of finance and ask him what 15 million dollars of residential tax assessment is worth in dollars. So he says about three hundred thousand okay. dollars. Okay, hold it. We're talking about the cap. Yes. And we, because we, because of the cap, we don't have three hundred thousand, or we didn't then, or we do in, now. In, in, in twenty ten, that was the that was the estimated impact of that of the cap on us, and so we didn't like that very much. Uh, today, it is, it is, you can see the gap is much smaller, and so the impact would be much less. I don't think it can. I don't think that, I, I think flat line or, or follow the exact same line would be, would be as, as, and I think it's a long time before you see that because there's, some properties have significant cap, and until that disappears at the rate of CPI, they're still going to have cap. So I don't think zero is, is a, you know, next year or the year after kind of thing. I think we're probably at virtual zero now. 
that, that uh, it's only those that have significant cap that remain. Okay, so uh, again, this is just another way of showing the same thing. So the, uh, you can see the cap impact right now on us is about $3 million of residential assessment versus, versus uh, 15. Commercial assessment, uh, this is what's happened over the last 12 years with commercial assessments in the town of Yarmouth. And you can see right now in 2017, we're about the same level as we were in 2007. So the commercial property assessments today are about the same as they were in 2007. They were higher, they came back down. Not significantly higher. The effective commercial tax rate, and the reason we throw the word effective in there is because in the early years of this chart, you actually had business occupancy tax and you had commercial property taxes. So it's the combined effect of those two taxes for, for a number of those years. But you can see that our tax rates, and if we continue in, in this year with the phase out of the subsidy to wastewater, you know, the tax rates on the commercial side are, are coming down significantly. That's being offset by increases in the uh, wastewater rates. Taxes receivable, uh, that number is, uh, has been very consistent for the last four years. Uh, one of the things that impacts us there uh, is the the number of properties that uh, come up for tax sale. We have a, a larger number of those under tax tax arrears arrangements, more so than we used to. So we changed our policy a couple years ago and a anticipating a significant benefit on the receivable side. What we actually saw was a significant increase in the number of, of tax arrears arrangements. We've also seen an increase in the number of properties up for tax sale that haven't sold. So you think about some of the properties that were up this past tax sale, owing us in the area of 50,000. Well, two of those is, is 100,000 or, or a full percentage point. Uh, we now have. That's right. That's right. So now we we now have our second one. Yeah, we're we're approaching thirty. Yep. So this is the second since since we started making these arrangements several years ago. Uh, this is only the second time we've had one go into default. So receivables as a percentage of taxes, and this is what I was talking about in terms of a full 1%. Sorry, the receivables now are running at about 9%. Uh, if, if it weren't for a few of those properties that have a huge amount of taxes outstanding, you know, we'd be a full percentage lower, potentially. Detransfer tax. Uh, not a popular tax with the realtors, but uh, this is what's happened with it over the years. And as a metric for measuring what's going on out there, I think the the last couple, two, three years uh, show a little more optimism around properties uh, moving or changing hands in, in the town relative to the years prior. The, again, that's uh, just an indicator. The room marketing levy, the last couple of years, we know we've had a ferry service restoration. We see an increase in, in room marketing levy. That, that should be no surprise. So uh, the, the the indicators, the financial condition index uh, put together by UNSM and AMA, we do have our indicators for this year or the most recent set of indicators, so I'm sharing them with you today. Okay, if we start on the, on the left-hand side, the first indicator is reliance on government transfers. And what you see here are four years of Town of Yarmouth history, okay? 11, 12, 12, 13, 13, 14, and, and 14, 15 being the most recent year. Uh, we've been pretty steady there, from ranging from about 4% up to our most recent year, 5.3%. That simply is a measure of how much uh, uh, government transfer do you get relative to your, your own source revenues. And that's gone up very, very slightly. Uncollected taxes has been very consistent, uh, never below 9%, never over 99 
Uh, the threshold is 10%. That's where they want you to be, is below 10%, and we've always been that. Uh, in years that we've been uh, had a green indicator, and we may again this year, they didn't apply the colors uh, as of yet. Uh, anytime you have a green indicator, you're not only below the threshold, but you're also below the average. Three-year change in tax base. Again, we've been very consistent there, uh, very modest, but, but consistent. Uh, 2.6, 3.7, 3.2, and again, 3.2. The threshold is interesting because that has come down from 8.37 down to 3.34, so we're actually uh, much closer to the, to the standard than, than we used to be. Uh, I guess they've probably refined the tool a little bit and, and realized that 8.37 was not anywhere near realistic. So, so what's that in plain English, this three-year change in tax base? So it's a change. Uh, do, you, do you get it? It's the positive okay. change of your tax base over three years. So you would look to see an average, uh, or, or uh, before I say that, I don't know if it's an average or if it's a total effect. I guess it's the total effect for three years at 3.2%. So, so from three years ago to today, you'd see a 3.2% increase. Oh, increase. Okay. Yeah, it would be negative if it was, if it was the other way. Yeah, okay. Good. So commercial property assessment, uh, this is re as a percentage of your overall uh, tax base. Ours is, has stayed uh, hi as high as 34.4 and currently 31.6. For towns, they want you to be above 20, so we're well above the average and, and uh, consistent there. Reliance on a single business, again, we're well below the threshold at 4.2%. So said another way, our largest business contributes 4.2% of our revenue. Sad. There are there are towns, uh, you can imagine, maybe single industry towns that have a very high number in that area. I want to know what that is. So budget indicators, uh, residential tax effort, uh, that is, uh, goes back to that uh, earlier one about median household income. So median household income factors into this, as does your, your average residential tax burden, or residential tax um, bill. And so as a percentage of income, ours is uh, above the threshold and above the average, which is not where you want to be. Uh, it, uh, it is very consistent, and when we've, done, we've done the math on this in the past. Um, if you adjust for the re the income level, put us back, put us at the average median household income, uh, we're we're well within the limits. But uh, because uh, the average household income is fairly low in our community, relatively speaking, um, that that indicator is is uh, is not where we'd want it. <clears throat> Number of deficits is one. Uh, that's over five years. Budget. Accuracy expenditure, budget expenditure accuracy, and this one this one annoys us a little bit. Uh, this year we are we are beyond the threshold, and what has put us beyond the threshold is this is a measure of your expenditures relative to budget. So uh, it doesn't take into account revenue. So if we get an unexpected, I don't know, couple million dollars to to refurbish a uh, a ferry terminal that expenditure is what look, was looked at as opposed to the fact that we have an offset, offsetting uh, revenue. What actually happened in this year, one of the impacts in this year was we had it budgeted to be basically phasing down, winding down our compost facility because we thought we were losing customers. So we had budgeted much lower expenditures. As it turned out, we didn't lose any customers because their plan B didn't work out. We actually gained customers and increased our rates so we got more revenue. We, we ended up in a more positive situation on that front than we could have ever dreamed. Uh, and we got a, a negative here on our, uh, on our indicator because they only look at the expenditure against what you thought your expenditures would be at the time of budget. Gone. <laughs> gone. Don't even think about that. Yeah, that's gone. Yeah. Your liquidity ratio is a snapshot in time. It looks at what your, your current uh, assets are against your, your liabilities. And uh, at the time that this snapshot was taken, uh, we were at our lowest in four years, but uh, still very close to generally where we are. 
operating reserves, uh, you know, fairly consistent there again, and certainly compared to the threshold, we're in very good shape. Debt service ratio, you, you can see that's consistently coming down, and uh, we have been reducing the amount of uh, debt that we carry by retiring debt and not taking on any new debt. Uh, we're down at 3.4% now, the threshold is 15, and uh, that, that's a healthy place to be. In terms of outstanding debt at 0.7%, uh, uh, Jerry, do you recall how, what that calculation is? I think yes, that's 0.7%. It's against it's against your your um, total assessment. It's the total assessment. Uh, uh, your what your debt is as a percentage of total assessment, which doesn't make it's kind of an interesting calculation, but it really isn't relevant to to much. Yeah. So un undepreciated assets. This is another one that annoys us a little bit because we think the formula is flawed. We put more into into infrastructure relative to to uh, depreciation than any, any other municipality, and yet our percentage of de undepreciated assets continues to go down, and we're approaching the threshold. We we did the math. We'd have to be investing north of nine million dollars a year into our infrastructure for that formula to work for us to just stay even. So the formula is flawed, and we've pointed that out to them. They've yet to change it, but uh, suffice to say. We're doing the right thing, and that's shown over the next, over the previous uh, columns as well as the next couple columns. So, five-year capital purchases. This is this is a percentage of your depreciation that you that you invest in your capital purchases. We're over over double what our depreciation is in investment in our capital assets. So, you know, 100% would be what they'd like you to do. We're doing more than double that consistently. Five-year capital contribution to reserves. This is a little misleading. Um, capital reserve includes your physical assets. Okay, so it isn't just your liquid, you know, ca uh, capital uh, reserve. It is. It is in fact your physical assets. And so as we put more into into uh, capital purchases, that number continues to go up. It really doesn't tell us a lot. Again, a formula that probably needs to be revisited. Last slide, uh, infrastructure, and this last page was really about our investments in infrastructure. Uh, 2007, estimated uh, infrastructure deficit for Canada was 123 billion. Uh, we own a piece of that. We have steadily decreased our share since 2005 while also reducing debt. And I did the numbers on that earlier this year. I think we've invested over the past uh, 10 years something like $30 million in infrastructure and reduced our debt by 2.3 million at the same time. Well, there it is. I had the numbers close. 27 million and uh, uh, reduced by 3.4 billion over the last uh, 10 years. Okay. Councillor Lanjo? I was sitting around the table for maybe too long after listening to all this, <laughs> which I'm just reading between the lines. Are you suggesting that we may be looking at a tax hike in order to keep sustainability going? Uh, I'm not suggesting necessarily that you're looking at a tax site, but what I am suggesting is I'm seeing it looks like there's a trend there that isn't sustainable. We talked about, uh, and in fact, 10 years ago, increased the tax rate significantly. And at that time, we talked about never having to be in that position again of, of having to make it such a large increase at one time. So the discussion at the time was you know what, we should increase the tax rate maybe a penny a year uh, to, to make sure we, we avoid that. And what's actually happened, uh, if you go back in the slides, is we've, uh, we've brought down the tax rates, particularly on the, uh, on the residential side. Yeah, there it is. When we've had surpluses, when we've, when we've done well and we've had surpluses that were in the, in the six figures, frankly, uh, it was pretty easy to reduce the tax rate that year because you had the room to do it and it was done and it was, uh, uh, you know, I'm sure, I'm sure the residents appreciated it. You're being faced with the situation last year where the, we had a very difficult budget to make balance. Uh, we had to make some choices and I'm anticipating this year to be 
significantly more difficult. So I'm not saying you'll have to reduce, uh, or sorry, increase taxes, but it's going to be inevitable someday unless we, we see a significant change in assessments. And we've been very flat, and in fact, negative in some cases on the assessment side. So again, help me out because you guys are the knowers of all knowledge here. When did we roll back dramatically those taxes? We did a we did a, a rollback of the tax rates. I believe it was the old council did that. That was a number yeah. of years ago. When when did that happen? So 2006, our rate was a dollar 86. We took five cents off the rate in 2007. We took another five cents off the rate in 2010. And it's been very, very stable since then. The only reductions have been this phase out of the subsidy. Mm -hmm. So it was those two, those two times that we did those five cent reductions, took 10 cents off the residential rate uh, based on what we were looking at basically that year, significant surpluses, we could afford to do it. But it wasn't taking the long view. When the tax rates were increased, I think it was 2005, or maybe 2006 was the year they were actually increased. Uh, we looked at the long view, and we looked at, at capital particularly, and what we weren't going to be able to, to afford to do uh, if we did not increase the tax rates. And so a, a significant increase went in place, and unfortunately, sitting here today in 2017 or 2016, 17, uh, we're, we're wishing that, <laughs> that we hadn't eased the rate, <coughs> excuse me, ease the rate quite so much. Mm -hmm. uh, so we've got to, we're probably going to have to address that, if not this year, some point soon. So a five cent reduction on the rate like we did back in 2006, Jerry, what does that represent in dollars? Five cents uh, on the residential rate is around, or a penny is around 25,000. What, $125,000 yeah. roughly. The, uh, what about the commercial? Commercial penny is around 17,000, I believe. Where are we at with 15, the commercial 17. tax rate? Can we just look at your neck, go back to that, Black? Yeah. So we never reduced them, did we, or? Well, we, we, what we did is we, we had to phase out the... That's uh, right. We had to phase out the business occupancy tax, and so for a period of, was it five years? Yep. We held yep. the effective rate at $4.55, the combined mm. rate. It went up to 4.62 in, in uh, 2011, that was because we removed that, that 10 cent uh, capital tax that we had. And uh, we've only started reducing it in 2015, we started reducing it, and again it was related to the, uh, to the phase out of the subsidy to the wastewater operations, so the wastewater rates will pay for the wastewater. So we've never, never really decreased the commercial rate uh, the way we did the residential rate. I mean, the bottom line is, is we are, I don't know, how, you know, when I look at it, I kind of agree with you, CAO, the, uh, I mean, I was part of that council that knocked that tax rate down. Um, in retrospect, looking back, I mean, I don't know how we actually have managed to hold things together over the years. We're off for giving the same service, level of service. In fact, I'd say even better, yeah, better, better yeah. service now than before, and that's kudos to the staff, but we're operating with a lot less. Uh, and uh, that is really something <coughs> that we, I mean, I'm not adverse. Uh, I'm on this one. I mean, we, we've got to have some vision here of where we're going. I know this is an election year, and the last thing people want to see is taxes go up. But the reality, we also have to be responsible. We have a town to run. Uh, I'm really relying on your advice for good, solid fiscal management versus the political side of the house. I'd like to, to see where we're heading because. Um, you know, $125,000 for five cents in the rate, that that's, works up to $250,000 on 10 cents in the rate. So if we hadn't have done that uh, by the previous council, uh, we would have had a quarter of a million dollar possible surplus right now, and we would have a little bit more edge way to, to play. Now, I'm not saying we should put rates up 10 cents, but on the other hand, I think 
personally, I would love to see staff come back and say, okay, this is what you, in order for you guys to do what we need to do, this is what we need to do, and say, hey, we, we, we will need extra funds, and it's not going to come out of a hat, it's going to have to come out of somebody. And uh, I'm personally a little bit adverse to raising the commercial rate because we have some commercial things happening right now, and uh, our rate is, is a fair rate, but on the other hand, we need to encourage business, especially in our downtown. But if it affects the residential, so be it. I mean, there's there's cost of good government, and this town is a gr great cat town to live in. And yeah, you may have to pay a little extra for it, folks. But you know, we may have to dig in our pockets a bit to keep this town afloat. So, I'm not saying we're sinking, but on the other hand, we've got to. I think staff really should be looking at where we're going down the road and say, hey, you know, and bite the bullet and say, if we got to do it, we got to do it. Yeah. If I if I make one one comment about about that is I think if we're if we're going to talk about tax rates I think we should do we should do what we what we did a long time ago and take the long view right the the town is not sinking I don't want to send the wrong message there uh, you know we do things fiscally <coughs> that no other municipal unit does so if we are going to continue to do that that's what makes things tight we invest a lot of money in infrastructure Right? And we do so because it needs it. And there were a lot of years when, when we didn't, okay? So if we're gonna adhere to that, then it's gonna be tight on the operating side, is all. But by no means are we up against a wall, you know, out of money, we could, we have that, that cushion that we could, you know, if push came to shove, if we were in a really, really hard times, that we could, we could relax what we do on the infrastructure side. That's that's one that I, I would I would not bring to you, unless we absolutely had to, uh, because I think it's it's very important. So we'll work we'll work the situation. We'll bring you options and advice. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, oh, now also we have some big projects looming over our heads as well. Um, I'm thinking more specifically the airport. The the three units did kind of see that as a priority. Uh, and that's a capital again, I'm assuming, in that point. And uh, that's something we should really plan for if, yeah. you know, get that should be set aside. And that's a kind of a scary thing that's sitting there. Also, we have a wastewater plant down the road that we have to start taking a look at. And I'm one of these ones that believe in putting money in a piggy bank for a rainy day. And that, uh, that, that water treatment plant is something that that rainy day is starting, those clouds are starting to roll around and down the road, we're probably looking at another five or six, I'm not sure how many years we have left, maybe even less, but we need to put money aside for that. So uh, this is where I'm glad to see you say we have to get a little visionary because these are some variables that to me have to happen, you know, for us to actually start. And maybe we have to put a routinely penny increase or whatever a year, because let's face it, the cost of living is going up, folks. I mean, it's going up, you know, I don't know, 1%, 2% a year and we're operating in 2006 dollars right now or roughly in that range so we're we're right now having the same amount of tax rate roughly as what we had if i'm right where are we at looking at the fancy chart 2017 we are 2016 we're less in the residential tax rate i think am i right than what we were back in 2006. Uh, that, that actually, I think you're referring to the chart I just brought yeah, up. Yeah. So what that is, that's the commercial assessment. Okay. And and we saw some growth in commercial assessment around, you know, up to peaked at tw 2009, but we're back down to the level of assessment that we had in 2007, 2006, 2007. Yeah. So we don't. We have low assessment, and we have a low tax rate. Yeah. Yep. So. Double duty. Yeah, on, on the airport, if I could, if I could uh, speak yeah. to the airport situation, that is that is a priority for us. Uh, there are some options there. The the airport is a municipal corporation. Uh, it could borrow on its own, so use its own own govern its own corporate structure to to borrow for, say, the local share of uh, of the infrastructure costs and pay that back over time. So that's an option. Uh, there, there is also the option of putting money aside, but clearly if we're going to do the kind of investment that's necessary there, we need federal and provincial money uh, to come in. Okay. Any more questions for Jeff or Jerry right now? 
S so when are we going to get actually, okay, this is the nice preliminary, but what's the timeline that we're looking at for the actual budget? Have we given any talks to that? Well, I can tell you that uh, next Friday, uh, Jerry and I are meeting to go over the estimates, okay? So he'll have, he'll have a pretty good set of estimates together. He and I, we, before we ever bring it to you, we always walk through it together to know what we have. And, uh, you know, realizing there's some, there's some traveling, some stuff going on with you folks, uh, we're going to work with Linda and set up a schedule of meetings. Uh, probably they'll be every week or every other week so that we can work our way through it and get to uh, get to a tax rate, a tax, a budget and a tax rate. Uh, usually we get that done for the May council meeting, so that's our goal. April and May are crazy. So is March. <laughs> Except if it's a Friday, Saturday, Sunday. <clears throat> oh, it's an election year as we can, it's the 17th, and um, we, can, we know it's an election year by the amount of talking that gets done at the table, which aggravates me to no end. Yeah, I have noticed that. I think it's, I don't even want to say what I think of that. Okay, I don't need to. You good? Okay, so motion to go in camera, please, and thank you.